Geek Myths, a novel about life, love, and the pursuit of sonic screwdrivers. Available in paperback and Kindle edition from Amazon. Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about 2020's Doctor Who on TV, episode 4, the one with Tesla. Tesla's Night of Terror? Sounds about right. Now, I just need to start off by saying, let's not talk about the elephant murder in the room, thinking that that would be funny, but what I actually wanted to discuss was how absolutely ridiculously nervous I was before this episode even started. You see, I'm a bit of a fan of Tesla. Tesla is one of my favourite scientific, well, historical people. And I just wanted them to get it right. Especially after the Ada Lovelace thing, where I did enjoy the fact that she was in it. But of course, there was that whole mind wipe thing. Oh, yeah, no, we'll come back to that one. I just wanted them to get it right. And they got it about as right as you can get in a Doctor Who celebrity historical. Just... Don't let him get played by Derek Bowie again. That's a, another reference. To, I'm just all over the place. Bear with me. He played him in the uh, Prestige. So you sit down and you think, "Oh, I'm going to watch this," and then the eagle-eyed amongst us spot a Silurian gun, and we go, "Well, where's that from then? Clearly, that's from the past or deep underground." Oh, are the Silurians in this? Are the Silurians in this in order for them to be spotted in a next time trailer so that everyone gets excited about the Silurians being in the storyline? And then, of course, we're disappointed because they're not, because we're going to think that it's old monsters in every single episode, or at least one reference to the past. So perhaps that's what this is. Or was it just an excuse to use an old prop? The Doctor, if you're referring it to it as an alien gun, yes, I know these Silurians aren't actually you know, aliens, they're the landlords of Earth and they really should turn up to try and save the day unless, of course, that's the reason that they want the world to warm up so that they can take control again. Are Silurians actually in charge of global warming? Is that a Doctor Who story waiting to happen? Or does that kind of counteract everything from Orphan 55? Yes, it does. Move on. So, you've also got an episode with um, the bloke out of Andrasani, brother of Philip Glenister and the even more famous Ronnie Glenister. Sorry, I'm way off topic. Look, I enjoyed the story. I did. I didn't, however, enjoy the one thing that everyone else seems to be banging on about. The stupid arachnid queen that looks nothing like her subjects. Her ridiculous rubbish cloaking device. No mention of Arachnos. Oh, she's a bit like, or something like that, but that was just too similar. So the bits that I did like, you know, the CG bits were lovely. The little, you know, the, the, the crashing sideways, the reactions of the characters into each other. Some animator was having a lot of fun. It was great. And the only thing that got in the way for me was that there was no celebrity mind wipe. Because that would be a thing for me. Because I argued in favour of the Ada Lovelace mind wipe last time. And that was fine. Because it fitted with the storyline. That's a woman getting a mind wiped. Man getting mind wiped doesn't happen in this story. And you've got two people who've been inside the TARDIS. They need their minds wiped. Big time. Perhaps it happens off camera. But that just makes it even worse. It needs to be one rule for all. That's something I feel very strongly about just in general. So I want that to have happened. CG bits, like I said, absolutely lovely. I just hated the villain. Stupid arachnid queen. Yes, I know she's a bit like Edison because she turns up and she steals stuff from other people and uses it for their own needs. 
But does that mean that capitalism is just theft? Is that what the left-wing secret organisation behind Doctor was trying to tell us? Because it just wasn't making much sense. I really, really liked Tesla. Oh, one more thing worthy of note is that this is a Doctor Who story written by a woman and directed by a woman. It's about time. These things should not be something so rare that they need comment, or at least deserve comment. It should just be happening. Should. Oh, it was pointed out on YouTube a few weeks ago that I said that I'd gone down the road of seeing that Doctor Who's a kid's show. It's a family show. But my real argument was that the preaching, and let's call it that, in Orphan 55, was that it was there because we'd been preached at when we were kids by the Pertwee stories. And the kids these days aren't going to get to see the Pertwee stories unless, of course, they buy Brit books. So they need a bit of preaching thrown their way. And yes, it'll look clumsy to us because we've heard it before. But imagine you hadn't heard it before. So I'm not saying that Doctor Who is a kid's show. What I am saying is that those we need to give them a bit of slack when it comes to preaching. Because being preached at was a traditional part of the show. Not something we all enjoyed, but it was definitely part of the show. Yes, Jodie isn't delivering it half as well as she could. And it does feel like she's going to turn to camera at one point and just kind of talk at us in a kind of a closing credits of He-Man kind of a way. But that was basically my argument. My argument was give it some slack. Yeah? So, did they get Tesla right? They got him as right as they could. I do want to go and see the film about Edison and Tesla, the, the current war. And I'm sure that viewing figures for that will pick up quite considerably after this particular show. Apparently that film was finished a couple of years ago, but because of the Weinstein case and the fact that it was made by that company, it all got caught up and embroiled in that, so it was never released on time. Yes, it was never mentioned about Edison being an elephant murderer. It's not important. What is important is that, well, some of the reactions out there are weird. Oh, who's Tesla? What do you mean like the car? Yeah, I know now he's a bit more famous, but people do kind of think of the car and possibly his company making them, but that's not the case. They've just used the name. However, Tesla as a car manufacturer isn't as well known in this country in the UK as he is in the States. So perhaps you need to give that one a little bit of a breather too. Yes, other people have pointed out the pronunciation of the word patent or patent, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on. But again, I'm going to let that one go because Mr. Glenister did a great performance. And of course, next time, well, next time we've got the Jadoon. Oh, something that I did notice in this episode that I do need to point out and I do need to discuss with you before I move on is the overdubbing. Now, it happened a few weeks ago. The camera pans away, the Doctor's doing something technical, probably not even the Doctor's hand, and in order to move the plot along, it was like um, in the first episode of Spyfall, there's a bit of uh, dialogue replacement that's a lot louder than the music where the Doctor explains that she needs a mirror, something reflective. And in this episode, she's talking about something being rusted up. Every episode has a moment of exposition that has a very weird sound mix, as if it's been shoved on at the last moment. Perhaps it's just my TV. And my phone. And my other methods of watching it, where the sound quality sounds the same. Or perhaps I'm just lifting out, listening out for it. I just don't know. My only issue, as I've said is where is my celebrity mind wipe? Because that's what you need. And is celebrity mind wipe going to be a new quiz show? I do hope so. So, if you are interested in Tesla, I suggest you track down a Radio 4 series called Great Lives, where Lisa Tarbuck um, talks about Tesla and a Tesla expert turns up and they both discuss everything. You can find out all sorts of things about um, his love of pigeons and his vision for the future. Yes, he may have seemed like a magician, but you know what? He was just a person. And not everyone who wins on the cash front is a winner. So, I really like this. This is 
one of my well this is my favorite of the season so far and that's good but remember next week is episode five which is the halfway point the halfway point of this whole series and if she stays for three years which is people's liking that marks specifically the halfway point of her entire time as the doctor even if she stays for four years the end of this series marks the halfway point but Jodie we've only just met you please stay so next time it's the Jadoon which I do enjoy and I might just go away and listen to a few big finishes about Jadoon I think I should so until next time I'll be seeing you that was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast available on iTunes YouTube Twitter RSS Vimeo and across the internet Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance, 